So let's talk about the line for our next quilt project. Uh, we're going to be making Island Getaway, and we're going to be using Tropical Breeze from Benertex. And you can see this is like an island vacation in a fabric collection. It's uh, designed by Greta Lynn for canvas, and they've got pineapples and palm fronds, turtles, flamingos, flowers, flip-flops, this is one of my favorites, butterflies, and then it wraps it up with this ombre palm tree print that's just so fun. So when they sent, first sent me this collection, it was, it was bright, it was whimsical, it was right up our alley, but I didn't know really what I was going to do with it because all of the scale of the prints is the same. They're all big and chunky and fun, um, and it's very bright and it's very busy. So the first thing I did was realize we were going to need to add some solids into this so that it would uh, have a place for your eyes to rest and so that each fabric could be showcased on its own. So we went over to their solids collection and we pulled these lovely yummy solids that go from tropical blue to grape. And we've got lime green in there and an orange lemon pink purple and these all go with the fabrics but it'll give them each each fabric a place to rest so that was the first step then i went from there and i thought well how can we marry two of these together into a block and there's a lot of traditional piece blocks out there but then i started thinking about hawaiian quilting and the fact that these kind of remind me of hawaii so i went ahead and i designed an applique that's very similar to a hawaiian applique with little pineapples and leaves and then I paired up each solid with a print and then we brought in white into the mix and the white acts as a resting place and it acts as a frame for each of the fabrics so we're going to go ahead and get started on our island getaway quilt but I wanted to share a little bit about the design and the fabrics and how we're going to use them we're going to cover a uh, piecing curved blocks because these are curved pieced and then we're going to talk about how to do this applique this one piece applique that's very traditional Hawaiian applique but we're going to take a shortcut and do it fusible so stay tuned and I'll be back once we get things started we are ready to cut our island getaway quilt and it's featuring the tropical breeze quilts from Benertex. In our pattern, it's a full, it's a large format pattern. So this is what it looks like in the bag. We always include full size templates, uh, and if it has a lot of pieces and parts, we'll also give you a full size placement drawing. But for this one, we have just the design, which mimics uh, Hawaiian quilting, which is my inspiration to this quilt design. It has the corners and the blocks, and then it has our sewing templates, our curves, background, and our curve. So those would get cut out, these would. These get traced on fusible web, which I'll show you here in just a minute. So we're gonna start cutting the project, but first I need my templates. And you can use template plastic for the curves if they're the, um, let's see, what did they measure? These are, I believe, it's an 8-inch finished drunkard's path. So if you had a ruler set, you could use that for this. Um, or you can just use the paper and cut them that way. Um, usually if I'm using a paper template, I will put it down on some template plastic. And I'm going to show you that in just a second. Is template plastic. This is, happens to be a Gypsy Quilter brand. Uh, I have not used this before. This is the first time I'm using her, her template plastic, but I do like a lot of their other tools, so I thought I would give this a try. And so this is what you get in template plastic. Okay, it's just thin. So what I usually will do layer it up double so that it's easier for my ruler to cut against it. Put that aside. 
I use any kind of spray adhesive. This is a spray and bond that um, you can use it on batting and fabric and other stuff, but I use it on this as well. And I put it in a trash can so that my overspray doesn't go all over my cutting table. So now I've sprayed it with adhesive. And I just line up the two pieces. So now I have double layer of template plastic. And then I take my piece and I'm going to spray that with some adhesive. And lay that on. And then the last piece. And just going to, I can use that for smaller templates. So I'm just ganging these up closer together. Okay, so those are ready. So you could go ahead and cut them out with scissors, um, or you could cut them out with a rotary cutter and ruler, which is what I'm going to do. Okay, so I've layered up my fabric. I need to cut four of these. It's a non-directional fabric, so I just fold it in half, fold it in quarters, and I lay this on my fabric, making sure that it's away from the edge in case one of the lower edges doesn't match. Now I'm going to take this ruler and I'm going to align the quarter inch line with the printed line on my template. This makes sure I actually cut a quarter inch seam away because sometimes when you're hand cutting templates, they can be a little off. And then we go ahead and cut those four. And I should get my turntable out because this will be easier on my turntable. So now I can align this here and here. And then I hold it with my hand. I put the blade next to the blade, the template. And go slow so you don't cut your finger. Always pull this away before you let go of your template in case you didn't cut all the way through. And there we go. We now have four template A's. I have a lot of white because there's the whole background is white, but we're just going to cut a couple of these. So whenever I have a shape like this, I take it and I measure it on a ruler and I need eight inch squares to cut this. Um, so it is an eight, a seven and a half inch finished block, but it's an eight inch template from edge to edge. So I'm going to go ahead and first cut my eight inch strip. And then I'm going to cut along that arc. And again, I'm using my hand to push down the template ahead of where the blade is going. Just go slow and be careful because these blades are very sharp. And I recommend having a very sharp blade when you start this so you don't have it skipping and bouncing off the fabric. So this becomes waste. It can be used for something else. And there is the other half of our arc. <clears throat> so this will go in here. 
So I also want to show you a different way to cut the curves. You can use the Creative Grids non-slip circle savvy ruler. And the directions tell you how to do all the math to figure out which of these arcs to use. These are the half inch marks going from three and a half to 15 and a half. And this side is the three inch to 15 inch whole number marks. Um, but a trick, if you don't want to sit and do the math, is to first cut your four squares an inch bigger than what you need. Or in this case, I'm using fat quarters, so I'm only gonna do a half inch bigger because I wanna make sure I have enough fabric, which means I need, these are seven inch, seven and a half inch arcs. So I'm gonna cut eight and a half inch square. But in my case, I'm cutting eight because I don't have enough fabric. Okay, so once you know I need to cut four of these, then what you do is, in this case, oops, in this case, I have a paper arc. So you can take this ruler and lay it on the arc and align, in this case, I need a seam allowance, so I align it with the bottom line. That's the quarter inch seam allowance. And then when you line it up, it shows you which arc to use on the ruler. So you don't have to try to read the formula and do the math. You can just say, okay, this is the 14 and a half inch arc line. So you take this, you have your square, you align the edge with the outer bottom line because we want to have a quarter inch seam allowance because we're sewing it to something else. The inner line is if you do infusible applique where you don't need a seam allowance. So I've aligned it. I like to use the smaller ruler and I'm short, so I'm gonna actually turn this this way so I can reach it. There we go, we're all lined up. I like to use the 28 millimeter rotary cutter because I can go vertical and it'll hug right against it. When you use this kind of a cutter, it's harder to use it. It's just bigger, it's more awkward. So I like the littler cutter for template cutting. So I'm riding the blade along the acrylic edge. And there we go. So if you don't want to use acrylic templates, which can be kind of, or plastic template, plastic paper templates, this is a really nice tool to use instead, and that's what I'm going to use to finish cutting these. All of the arcs are cut. Next up is the white. Now, for the white, it does the same thing. What you would do is measure this as a square, and it is an eight inch square, so I'm gonna cut all my white squares at eight inches. And then I come over here and again, do the same thing. I try to find this arc that matches the seam allowance. And in this case, 
it is going to be the 13 and a half inch slot not the 14 and a half so 14 and a half did the the con con Vex part and 13 and a half will cut the concave. So we have this, I believe, is already eight inches. It is. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut eight inch squares. Then we lay this ruler on again, aligning the quarter inch seam on each side because we are sewing the pieces together, not fusing. So we use the outermost line and it's easier to do it this way. And then we're going to use, oops, make sure you're using the 13 and a half inch line. Those are whole numbers, these are half. And I'm gonna double check this to make sure before we cut. And that is correct. All right, so now that is the piece we want to keep. And that's exactly the right size. So now for the other part of our block, because we've cut the circle and we've cut the background. <clears throat> Now we need to cut our applique that's going to go on top of the block. So here's the picture again. So the white is here, the butterflies is the black, and now I need a pink one of these and four blue pineapples. So when you do that, you take this part of the, temp the pattern and you take fusible web, which I'm using uh, Heat and Bond Feather Light. And I lay it on top of the drawing and we trace it. Now I had a lot of help. Someone else traced all these for me so we could get the hook made. But I do trace them all using a Sharpie ultra fine point pen because the tip of the pen is the same thickness as a blade of scissors. So you, if you don't have a super thick line and have to guess on which side of the line to cut. So if you're going to do applique, Usable applique, I recommend the Sharpie Ultra Fine Point Pens. So once we have one of those traced and four of these traced, we're done with this. So you would trace all of the listed colors and numbers. So then we have this part, and you want to roughly cut out your applique shape on the drawn outside the drawn line. four pineapples. They're all the same color so you can cut them together outside the drawn line. You don't have to cut them apart individually. Um, in this case these two are really close together so I'm going to keep them together and I'm going to get rid of some excess of this piece of the web around the other ones. And that's just so I don't waste the actual fabric. Alright, so there's my four pineapples. So, for this quilt, this block, we need the pink for the big piece, the blue for the little piece. And in this case, these are solid, so there's no right or wrong side, but we are going to press the pineapples, the little guys, on the wrong side of the fabric. It has a different setting for temperature, and it has an amount of time 
that you need to press it. So for the feather light, it's only two to three seconds to press this onto the fabric. And then again, three to four seconds when you press fabric to fabric. So I'm going to take these over to the ironing board. I'm going to iron this one on the pink or on the blue and this guy on the pink. And then I will come back and show you the next step. All right, so these are pressed. The pink has the big one. And then these little guys are on the blue. So then you take your fabric scissors. I like to cut them apart so they're a little easier to handle. And we're gonna now cut them out on the drawn lines. And the reason we do the outside the drawn lines and then on the drawn lines is if I were to cut the shape out on the drawn lines, then iron it on the fabric, and then cut it out again, the edges are gonna be raw. They're not gonna be captured in the glue for the fusible applique. By doing it this way, we've now sealed all our edges and glue and we won't have fraying on our quilt top. So I cut at the back of the scissors and I actually move the paper into the blade. And I work at the back of the scissors because you actually have more control than you do at the front of your scissors. And you just sit and cut these, or if you're lucky enough, um, my husband loves to cut these, so he cuts them once I get them all pressed. But for today, I'm going to do this so we can do the block. So we're down to the home stretch on the last round of leaves. Right about now I'm thankful there's only 12 of these in the quilt because when you have something floppy and big like this, it is definitely easier to cut it while sitting at a table than try to cut it in your lap. Um, but it will be very, very pretty at the end. And we don't have to layer anything. It's all in one shape, which is the bonus. So usually what takes longer on one end will take less time on the other. So blanket stitching this will be a snap because I don't have to go up and down and break my threads. I just go around the shape one time. So there's that. So we've got that done. We've got our four little pineapples that go in the corners. There's Mr. Four. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you have, make sure you like and subscribe below. You can find The Whimsical Workshop on our website, thewhimsicalworkshop.com, and that has all links to all of our other social media platforms. Thanks for joining us. Yeah.